Uh, this is the Planning Committee for Thursday, the 10th of March, 2022. And I just have a short introduction which I need to read out. Um, so councillors uh, and officers are reminded to put their mobile phones or electronic devices on silent if they have one near them, and those present in the room should face forward when speaking and speak directly into the microphone and not place papers or electronic devices between themselves and the microphones. Also, please remember to turn the microphone off when you finish speaking, as this uh, tells the camera where to go or where not to go. Uh, I don't think we have any remote participants today. Uh, if we do have any remote participants join in, I will identify who they are. Uh, so after each item has been presented by the, uh, there is only one item by the development manager today, I'll invite uh, uh, firstly the speakers to prevent, uh, present and then the, uh, the, I will invite the uh, ward members to present after that and then the members of the committee. Uh, I don't believe we have any joining us remotely, as I said, and so uh, on that basis, I, we will commence with the, the meeting. When the decision is made, I will announce what that decision is. Uh, I'm going to start with for asking if you could give me authorisation to sign the minutes for the meeting of um, uh, last month, the 17th of February. So moved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good. Uh, apologies. So we have apologies from Councillor Johnson and Councillor John Barnes is standing in a substitute today. Thank you very much. Uh, now we did have one additional item on the agenda, which is item 11, obviously not showing on the original uh, planning committee, and I'm going to ask uh, Ben Hook to comment on that. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I apologise to members of the committee for dropping this one quite so late. It was brought on urgently, but having, having uh, consulted with uh, the ward members and, have, and make rep representations, also following a conversation with Councillor Andrew Brown of Hurst Green Parish Council, uh, I sort of reconsidered the opportunity to, to maybe ask the committee to approve that we withdraw this from this agenda and bring it back to next month so that it allows the Parish Council to make representations to their ward members to bring forward uh, for the debate next time. I think it's important that we get the views of the local community and the last minute nature of this report doesn't allow for that. That's a project. I'm certainly in favour of that because I think um, because of the late arrival of it, we'd, none of us had really the time to consider all the implications and certainly the parish council should be involved. So thank you for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Anna. Once again, if I may, I'd also add that it... it Given it 24 hours before the planning meeting does not give the Parish Council or opponents or supporters the opportunity to speak at this meeting, or even possibly to attend because people make their plans more than 24 hours in advance. So I think it's, it, it, of course it should be withdrawn. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gannon. If I may chair, yeah, I, just, I do want to assure, assure members that the due process was followed, that we, we you know, but just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean you should do something. Um, and obviously we'll uh, bring this back to the next meeting so that everyone can have their opportunity to, uh, to make representations as properly. Yeah, so thank you, Ben. I mean, officers have made the right decision, and that's good. And I think it opens up broader issues which we need to discuss, and we'll do that. So thank you very much. Uh, I don't believe we have any withdrawn applications. We only have one application today. Do we have any disclosures of interest? No disclosures, thank you very much. Uh, you'll note the uh, planning application index, and that uh, conveniently takes us on to the very first um, item. No, actually, uh, before we go on that, uh, I will bring item 8 forward. Item 8 was the proposed changes to the scheme of delegation and establishment of a planning consult consultation group. Um, it, it's been agreed that this will be deferred uh, to probably the next meeting to give the, uh, an opportunity for some more feedback and some clarification because I don't think the recommendation was articulated in a way that was easily understood. So uh, that will be deferred and we'll come back. So uh, uh, that deals with that item. The, which takes us to the only planning application today, which is RR2021-2252-P, stroke stroke and that is the marriage recreation ground. And I'm going to hand over to... Uh, Miles Joyce, the development manager. Thank you, Miles. 
Thank you very much, Chair. Um, this is an uh, application for the construction of an electrical race car track and siting of a shipping container for storage at St Mary's Recreation Grounds. Um, the land at St Mary's Lane. St Mary's Recreation Grounds, a large open space located on the eastern side of St Mary's Lane, and you can see it here on the overhead. The site is outside the development boundary for Bexhill and is within the countryside. It is not within the high wheeled area of outstanding natural beauty. <coughs> The recreation grounds itself is grassland, offering general open amenity space for the hard standing near the access, providing parking facilities for visitors. The nearest neighbouring property is High Beaches, which is located some 77 metres to the south. Um, the proposal seeks um, for the construction of an electric car racetrack and siting of a shipping container for storage. The land is used for the track for 1066 Racing, which is an off road radio controlled car racing club. The elements proposed in the application for the proposed land use for the track are a flat track measuring approximately 40 metres by 40 metres of the grass service within the fenced area, which will be maintained by 1066 Racing, a timber constructed rostrum, raised area for drivers to view track control of their cars, and a shipping container clad in wood providing a secure place for to store club equipment, including that to maintain the land. The proposed usage of the club meetings will be a Sunday morning for a maximum of five hours, from 9am till 2pm, and on one weekday evening during the summer months, after 5pm till sundown. The track would not be lit, even if meetings would only take place during the summer months. There would be in between 15 and 25 competitors, potentially 30 at a busy meeting. It should be noted that the indoor events would attract the most attendees, rather than the outdoor occasions. It is proposed that 20 vehicles will be at a busy outdoor meeting, but often this would be lower. It is proposed that 20 to 25 parking spaces of 3 by 5 metres will be positioned by the grass, grass sorry, on three sides of the proposed racetrack. Uh, parking will be authorised under an annual licence issued by Rother District Council Neighbourhood Services. Access to the parking spaces will be across the grass from the existing hard standing car park. A club representative will be on hand to oversee the arrival and departure of the vehicles attending. Now, in planning terms, the main issue for consideration of provision of the recreational space for the electric car race and use and its effect on the locality, I beg your pardon, and the impact upon neighbouring and nearby properties. Now, it's concluded that um, the proposed structure would not detract from the locality of the recreation grounds, would not adversely impact on nearby neighbouring residential properties, and would not prejudice highway safety. The proposal complies with core strategy policies together with various provisions contained within the framework, can therefore be supported and granted full plan permission, subject to the expiry of the reconsultation period currently taking place, which actually has um, now expired. So recommendations subject to conditions to grant planning permission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Miles. <coughs> before, I, <coughs> excuse me, before I ask the, uh, the two speakers to speak, I'm going to do my general reminder, and the general reminder is that uh, in this circumstance we act as the planning authority, uh, not as representatives of the district council, and that's always a fine line, but we are applying planning policy as opposed to deciding whether we think this is just a great idea for, for use of rather land, and that is a really important point to remember during this process. Um, and on that basis, I'm going to ask the first speaker to come forward. It was it... Uh, did you have a preference? Uh, Mr. Moxham? Des Moxham. <laughs> if you just come forward. So, have you said, uh, I, no, if you... No, no, please don't uh, circulate anything. If you just sit down at the speaker's table, that would be uh, uh, perfect. Uh, unfortunately, that has to be circulated beforehand. Um, and uh, when you speak, you need to press the red button. And you've, you've got five minutes. Have you pressed your red button? Okay. Hello, my name is Des. I live 67 metres from the proposed track in a quiet rural environment with very little background noise. I could not help but hear the demonstration on August 2020 but did nothing to complain because I thought it was a one-off event. There are serious flaws in this application that the area in the application form is not 1,600 square metres, but 2,538, and all for one pound per annum when I pay 3,166 £3, pounds per year in council tax. Hardly fair. 
existing use. No contamination assessment was ever submitted with this application, even though the applicant ticked yes to suspected contamination. It's an old landfill tip. External materials are going to be used. And on to nine, vehicle parking. The application does blatantly add vehicle parking, even though the applicant ticked no on the application form. And it states, no plans for toilets on site. Are the hours of opening relevant to this proposal? That's what it asks in 19 on the application form. They ticked no. Surely this number of people descending on St Mary's Lane at 9am on a Sunday morning shouldn't be allowed. Even Tesco's can't open until 10am and 5pm till 10pm on a weekday evening when people are relaxing in the gardens is unacceptable. Plans. The amended location plan clearly shows the development line in red, including the parking, but it fails to outline in red the route to access the parking spaces. This requirement is clearly outlined in section one of the National List of Planning Requirements and the Council's own validation checklist. Who is going to maintain the parking spaces and the access road to the track? The amended block plan clearly illustrates that there are 37 new car parking spaces around the track, but the officer's report says parking is proposed for 20 to 25 parking spaces of 3 by 5 metres. This is wrong. The officer's report fails to state historical use as landfill. These fundamental faults in the application should have been picked up at council validation or officer level, which points to maladministration of the application and it should be rejected. Noise. I have on numerous occasions requested that the applicant should provide a noise assessment as these cars are noisy and could clearly be heard on the demonstration day in August 20, along with the spectators and their vehicles. Relying on the applicant's statement of little to no noise is not adequate. Who is going to ensure that nobody uses extremely noisy IC Nitro cars when no one is present from 1066 Racing? Saying it's like a BMX track is not sufficient. There is a distinct legal difference between a BMX and a motorcycle, but very little difference between the two types of model car. Signage will not be sufficient. Competitors. The planning statement says they have currently between 40 to 80 competitors per meeting at the Hastings site, which I might add they are going to retain. Why would less people attend the nice new outdoor track? Since being questioned on the number, it's dropped from 30 to 25 to 20 and now 15. It seems that the applicant is prepared to say anything, then once passed will do as they please. Access. East, Sans sorry. East Sussex County Council have not been consulted. St Mary's Lane is a narrow, winding country lane with 90 degree bends and a hairpin bend. It's single file in places. I set my alarm for 6am last Sunday and only five cars and three horses came along the lane before 11am, introducing an extra 37 plus cars early on a Sunday morning surely is unacceptable and dangerous. Objections. Why has the officer blatantly ignored at least 59 objections by her count and plus another 19 new in the last week? Even one from Bexhill Town Council who are objecting, who may inherit control of the site when passed. Only two, 22 letters of support were received, three were from the applicant, and only two of these supporting comments were about the suitability of the site. The rest were about comments in support of the hobby. Someone put a direct link to the application online comments from Facebook, and a few people used it. But comments on the Facebook itself surely is not credible evidence for planning. Most people don't even use their real name. Other sites, my last point. This site will only be accessible for three months maximum because the site is so boggy. Clearly there are more appropriate sites like the bottom of the downs by King Offer School where the container could go against the black wall there's parking in the drill hall, parking in the sports hall, parking on Downs Road. There are toilets in the sports centre, paths to lead to the track, and no one to disturb. They could have a meeting on Christmas Day, should they choose. Thank you. Uh, I'd like, uh, <coughs> if you want to, uh, Mr. Martin. Uh, 
Uh, oh, no, the members might have questions, I'm not sure. Um, that's, all right. that's all right. No, thank you very much. I know it's uh, uh, very tricky doing it. Yes, <laughs> that's all right. Well, you've done a good job. Um, do any members have a, a question for Mr. Lockwood? Yes, Councillor Mayor. Yes, it, this may be a question for the officer, but you may know the answer. Um, what is the nature of the track? I don't think it's going to be tarmac, is it? It's going to be laid on top of the grass. What is the nature of the surface? It says in the planning statement that they are going to initially have grass and then eventually they're going to install astroturf, which is really bad for the environment, on top of the um, site itself. And, and like I said, there's no contamination report. Okay, and okay. it does also yeah. say that they were going to put... Sorry. Okay, no, I think you've answered the question. Have I? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's good. Thank you. Any, another question for Mr. Lockwood? Any other questions? No, thank you very much. We, we, we take all your points. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, 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 I think we, now we have uh, Tracy Legg. Would you like to come forward? Thank you very much. Just a reminder, you need to press the button and have the red light on uh, when you're talking, when you're not, to turn it off. Thank you. Uh, take your time. You've got uh, five minutes. Um, good morning. Before I begin, I'll just pick up on Desi's point um, regarding the wildlife aspect. Um, one of the objectors approached me as I arrived to say that they had, in, had indeed been in touch with the Wildlife Trust, and they raised concerns regarding the matter of the AstroTurf. Um, and I also, from observation from my back kitchen uh, window, recently, to my astonishment, I um, had seen many, many um, mounds of earthworks from, from mole activity, which I've never seen before, and that would be directly underneath the proposed site of where they're planning to put this AstroTurf. So that's not a point that I particularly um, studied before I came this morning, but that's just the point I picked up. So now I will begin with my speech. Um, good morning. My name is Tracy, and my garden backs directly onto the recreation ground. I am rejecting to this proposal based on my very real experience on the day of the demonstration whilst in my garden. Firstly, I found the noise of the spectators in combination with the continuous whining and thud-like sounds of the electric cars, very irritating and very difficult to ignore. I, in addition, the sight of the vehicles and associated equipment was unsightly and, quite frankly, objectionable. Therefore, the overall impact interfered with what I would call a natural enjoyment in my own back garden. An additional point there is that I will see, I can see it as though it's there for me, visually from my garden, on, oh no, perhaps when the map perhaps comes up, we will see, not only will we see the activity in, in full, we will hear the activity in full. But not, just not speaking for myself, that's my adjacent neighbours as well. Um, in addition, I feel that my experiences that I have reported to the council have been ignored and I totally reject the uh, many unsubstantiated claims suggesting that there will be little or no disturbance to residents. And I dispute the comment made that the demonstration was indeed well received by all, considering a great deal of people were not aware it was even taking place. I appreciate that some parallels have been drawn with that of a game of football or cricket. However, the traditional ball games have no resemblance to people gathered in large numbers playing with electric cars. Who, who may, I do not know, may be using a tannoy or a generator, adding to further noise disturbance. Also, I feel that overall the process could have been better managed and perhaps an assessment into both the noise and the environmental impact would have been helpful and it leaves me wondering on what basis any future complaints that I may wish to bring to the council, how they will be handled. Finally, in my opinion, the proposed nature of this activity is not compatible with what would ordinarily be expected on a green field site. And I question why a more suitable, less offensive and intrusive 
location has not been chosen. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, it is good to see a, a group of people here today as well. Thank you for that. Are there any questions? Any questions for the speaker? You've obviously been very clear in what you said, so, uh, so thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Really, I know it's a, it can be quite a stressful experience speaking, so we do appreciate that. And you've, ra you've raised a number of points which I'm sure are going to be discussed. Um, so, <clears throat> so that's good. Now, um, I'm sure the development manager will comment on a number of things that have been uh, raised already, but uh, before he does, I'm going to ask one or both of the um, ward members if they would like to speak, and then I, I think I'll get uh, Miles to just respond to points that have been made and then open it up for discussion, yeah? So uh, did uh, Councillor Coleman or Carol wish to speak? <clears throat> Go on, Councillor Coleman. Thank you, Chair. Um, when you went to Bexhill, a sign greets you saying welcome to the birthplace of British motor racing. Uh, before you sits an opportunity to bring that legacy forward to the 21st century and provide a compact, accessible recreation activity that has all the fun and thrill of competitive sports, but one in which every player is on a level playing field. I got to experience this firsthand at the trial event in 2020. I only wish something like this was available when I was younger. Uh, when you don't feel athletic enough for competitive sports like football, uh, or like many disabilities prevent you from physical activities, uh, it becomes very hard to get outside and get fresh air, uh, and even harder to develop the social bonding skills developed in team sports. Almost anyone can hold a remote control in their hand and operate one of these controlled cars, uh, and the club welcomes all new members and racers. Those who attended the demonstration, including residents, councillors and local families, uh, to, to my knowledge, came away with grins ear to ear at the possibility uh, that this opportunity could find its way to Sidley. These small electric vehicles are quiet, barely audible among the sounds of nearby lawn mowers. Uh, the track is small and compact, taking up far less space than the other sports that used to be played there regularly. The parking is more than adequate with both the spaces in the corner of the site and a nearby car park and during larger events the procedures are in place as the report details for parking to take place around the track as it did when sports took place there before. The application today also begins what I hope will be uh, the regeneration of this recreation ground to become a place for recreation once more. Sydney Cricket Club need a home and this application would present them with an opportunity to share the site between clubs ensuring sustainability long into the future. Now, there are clearly some objections, and as a local councillor, I have read these very carefully, uh, and it is absolutely right that caution should be exercised when use of green space is considered. Although I think there has been some communication issues around what the plans actually entail. Uh, the word RC motor racing can conjure up wearing images of some brand's hatch-style monolith, and when literature is distributed extensively that misunderstands some of the details of this application, I can understand how those living nearby could have major reservations. Likewise, a town council in its infancy, receiving similar literature, may also feel hesitant to endorse this project, especially prior to receiving in-depth training on planning matters. Uh, now, the assessment within the report should, I hope, allay the concerns. To quote, this application will not detract from the locality of the recreation ground. This application will not adversely impact neighbouring properties. This application will not prejudice highway safety. The facts show that this meets every test of a planning committee is meant to apply and the site complies with both the core strategy and the MPPF. When the reality of this project is laid out to residents, as it was on the trial day uh, and as detailed multiple times on social media, the local response as far as I can see has been overwhelmingly positive. I've heard from so many local families and residents about their excitement for this project. Residents that don't get a voice on planning committees, often because they just don't use things like planning portals. Sidley boasts many idyllic dog walking spots only three dedicated recreation grounds. There's Canada Way, where this committee agreed the transformative skate and BMX park development, which opens in spring and will be a roaring success. Gulliver's, designated as sports and recreational use, with the hope that football will be able to be played there once again in the future, um, sadly currently under private ownership. And St Mary's, which sits before you today. These three sites used to provide sports and recreation that was famed across Sussex. It's my hope that they will do again. So, whether you vote because you want to provide this incredible opportunity to the families of Sydney and beyond, or, or because it fits with planning policy and meets the planning tests, I ask you in the strongest possible terms to consider accepting the officer's recommendation for Sydney. Thank you.
thank you very much, Councillor Coleman. Uh, Councillor Carroll. May we ask questions from the gentleman? No. <laughs> no, unfortunately, uh, the only people who can speak are those who have registered to speak. And uh, have... no, no, uh, uh, no, you can't. Unfortunately, once, once you. All right, so uh, I'm sorry, sir. Um, the, it, we follow a procedure, and actually, we have the best speaking procedure right across this uh, sort of county. So um, uh, it gives you opportunity for people to come forward and speak, and you have done. Um, but the, you know, the, 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 what I would say is that the, the, the committee listens to everyone and hears all the points being made and consider those points. And you'll hear that discussion in a minute. Um, <laughs> but, I'm afraid that's not. A, ex, I, I'm, excuse me. I'm not going to engage in discussion with the with, with the public gallery. Um, uh, uh, Councillor Carroll. Okay. So if you continue to if you continue to interrupt, I'm going to ask you to leave. Okay. That's it. Okay. Councillor Carroll. Thank you, Chairman. Um, what my learned colleague here has said, oh, I agree wholeheartedly. But I do know that there are some things that people might not agree with, and we can sort things out that makes them happy. But this area was built for uh, the public use, and I think with the way Sydney's going, we need these areas and to keep them into sports and leisure. Uh, and I, I hope that this is uh, met kindly by this one. The main thing that I found with people is a, a thing with toilets but we've had uh, that was the seconds of the rugby team when we had it here that was their home and uh, the football teams that have been up there the cricket that's been up there um, uh, we, we, there's a few things that we've got to sort out but this should be um, um, done um, and passed thank you very much thank you thank you very much uh, Councillor Carroll so just before we open the discussion I'll ask uh, um, Miles Joyce to comment on a number of issues that have been raised by the speakers to, to, to comment on those and to say what you'd like to say. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, firstly, um, the area states it um, and what's on the application form, yeah, that's only part of an application. It's what the information as a whole, which we're taking into account. It's the planning merits of the application which are taken into account. And it's on balance we found in favour of this application and plan permission ought to be granted, um, subject to conditions. Um, in terms of distance from the track, um, the first speaker said 67. We thought it was 77. Um, uh, hang on, excuse me. Sorry, please, let me see. Um, in terms of no contamination assessment, that wouldn't be necessary for this type of application. Um, it is a recreational site. It has been a recreational site. Um, there is nothing here that, um, in the application that talks about any earthworks or any disturbance of the soil. It wouldn't be required. Um, the vehicle parking, uh, it says there's spaces for more than 20 or 25, but it's saying 20 to 25 in any particular meet. Now, these are temporary spaces just for the events. They're not going to be fixed car parking spaces. The access is going to be from the existing car park, as was set out in the report, um, and this will be stewarded as well on race days. Um, I'm just thinking the toilet facilities, again, it's temporary. It's below the threshold of visitors requiring toilets, though temporary toilets can be, can be provided if necessary through our environmental health, um, environmental health um, service. Right. Um, and the noise assessment, environmental health were um, consulted. There was no objection. They said the proposed use limited to only one or two days per week and to present no significant noise impacts and no requirement for artificial lighting. Consequently, they have no adverse observ observations on the proposed use. So um, if environmental health, who are our expert consultees, say this isn't required, um, we do take uh, that with put a high degree of weight on that. Um, now, in terms of um, wildlife, again, there's nothing in terms of doing works here. Again, the nature of the um, application would mean you wouldn't need um, an ecological assessment. So, they're the points I remember being made. Um, of 
course, there is a community benefit in terms of this recreational use and possible regeneration. Um, and then what, we're here, what we have here is potentially um, what you could say are, are essentially minor adverse impacts, but a lot of them I would say are neutral because of the light degree of usage of the site. So the planning balance, I think, in the officer's report is sound, and it comes down in favour of plan permission being granted. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Miles. Uh, uh, Councillor Barnes. Yes, that's you. Mary Barnes, sorry. Apologies. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. <clears throat> Just a couple of things that I picked up from, from, from speakers. Um, and one was uh, resonated, rather, with a planning application we had some years ago um, when we were looking at motorbike um, um, scrambling. Um, and the opportunity to be able to bring um, bigger engines, vehicles in than we had originally planned for at, um, when giving planning permission. <clears throat> and I'm just a little bit alarmed that the sound where it possibly is just about reasonable um, by <clears throat> the, um, uh, all the tests that have been taking place now, but whether those actually, uh, we could actually say, we, we must not have these super noisy cars included uh, on this circuit. Um, and the, another point that I picked up was, what if we want to object? What if we need to be able to draw attention to the fact that this is getting really out of control? Um, you, we, we, we've tried complaining and you're not listening to us. And I think we've really got to address that kind of thing because if we are going to allow this, I think we've got to be absolutely sure that particularly on a Sunday morning, and my own preference would be certainly not to allow anything on a Sunday morning. I'm a church girl. I like peace and quiet. I really would not appreciate having something like this going on um, particularly. No, no, really, really, no, no that, that's really not necessary. This is just how I feel about it. Why do we have to have it on, on, on a Sunday morning? I'm... I, I, I'm a fairly sort of laissez-faire sort of person, so that if you want to do this, then that, that's absolutely fine. But please, not on a Sunday morning. Um, and um, uh, but I, I don't like the idea of having tannoys, any other incidental noise going on. Um, I personally would go with the flow if this was kept really under control. But it seems to me this might be an opportunity for this thing like Topsy to grow, and I would like to know that there's going to be a fail-safe for what happens when it does get thoroughly out of control. Yeah, just, a res just a response by the development manager, and then we'll move on to... Just, um, just to draw your attention, uh, Councillor Barnes, to Condition 3, um, that limits the use one weekday evening per week, and she'll cease before sundown, and Sundays between 9am and 2pm. Condition 4... The car race track here by Pudish shall only be used by electric remote controlled vehicles and shall not be used by petrol or other fuel powered remote controlled vehicles. Uh, and condition five, which is no floodlights and no other external means of illumination of the race track here by permitted shall be provided, installed, or operated at the site. So there's three limiting conditions there in terms of how much you can use it what should be used, and that you can't have floodlighting or external illumination without planning permission. Um, you know, there is a, perhaps, you know, there may be a potential to have an additional um, permission in, in terms of um, amplified, yeah, amplified sound, perhaps being prohibited. But that's something potentially for you to consider. Uh, look, um, I, I'm no... No, absolutely. I, I've, said, I've already explained how the, how the, the committee works. And, and it's really important that you respect that. Right. And the next person that doesn't respect it, I will ask them to leave. So I don't, I don't care who it is in the group, right? It's as simple as that. It is really irritating. You know, the committee is really trying to listen to, they've listened to the things you've said, they're discussing those things, they're taking them into account, and, and that's the process. And you have to let the committee get on with doing that. The next person that speaks while somebody's speaking or interrupts is leaving the chamber, okay? Simple as that, because this is the way it works. You have to respect the process, so please, please. It doesn't help your case interrupting. Uh, the next person to speak is uh, Councillor Maidley. 
Thank you, Chairman. Um, firstly, I'd like to say how much I agree with uh, Councillor Mary Barnes regarding the Sunday morning. Um, I, I realise it's down here on the conditions, but is it not possible to move this to a Sunday afternoon, for example? I know it's not a popular day from residents, but I'm just thinking, you know, it's sharing a situation, trying to make, make it slightly easier. Um, most importantly, though, can, to, uh, can um, toilet facilities be added to the conditions? Um, I mean, it's okay, you say it's limited numbers, but nevertheless, people could be there for a few hours and without any access to toilet facilities could, could cost could cause problems. We know what Canberra is like. And thirdly, regarding noise, is there any way, I appreciate, I appreciate it's open land, is there any way that noise can be screened? Thank you. Well, in terms of um, the Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, um, they plan for Sunday morning, we consider it reasonable, Sunday afternoon, Potentially, if you're looking at developing other recreation, that could interfere with that. There's talk of a cricket club possibly returning. They'd play on Sunday afternoons. Um, in terms of toilet facilities, it's well below the threshold of visitors required for toilet facilities, which in any case would be a, a matter not to do with planning. We couldn't condition that. Um, and I think in terms of noise, it would be we can't screen it. There might be a, a way forward to have a condition not allowing any amplified noise during the use. A bit like condition five, which is precluding floodlighting without express planning permission. Uh, does that include generators? Um, Could it include generators? Potentially, but if that's required for use, that wouldn't be reasonable. Okay, well, let's think about and that. And it may not be reasonable given the limited hours in use anyway, but it's just potential to explore that. Uh, Councillor John Barnes. <clears throat> Chairman, I may want to make comments later. At this moment, though, I want to ask questions of the officer. Go ahead. Um, my first question really is why we are, have we considered uh, the possibility of giving a planning permission for two years so that we test out actually what the effects are rather than give a blanket planning permission uh, forever because once you've given a planning permission it's almost impossible to rescind. I have some experience with a cold store which started with one building and ended with over 200. Um, so the notion of giving a limited planning permission seems to me worth exploring Given the uncertainties, this is a very new use to the ground. So has that been considered by the officers? I'm not sure whether it has been considered. I think in part because it's felt the limiting conditions themselves were sufficient. I mean, it limits it also in terms of in accordance with the approved plans as well as the limiting conditions 3, 4, 5. So they are fairly limiting on the use. And so um, a proliferation increase and in intensification of that use may well find itself, in, you know, in the in a way of potential enforcement action. Yeah. Yes, it leads me really to my. I have watched um, on YouTube a couple of these events, um, quite interesting, um, and I have attended. Over 40 years ago, I think, one. Mm -hmm. So I have some experience. Those, those were petrol vehicles 40 years ago. The ones on YouTube were electric. Um, uh, I'm not quite clear. The ones on YouTube had leaps as well as straightforward racing along the grass. And I'm not quite sure what is envisaged here. Um, if the leaps were made permanent, that would involve disturbance of the soil. So again, one needs to... Well, that that's... I'm not sure it's serious, but it's a point we need to consider. It's one of the reasons which led me uh, to ask about um, a fairly extended temporary permission uh, to see how this worked. The third 
question. I mean, I'll let Miles comment on that. He may feel it's not material. Um, it's the overall noise, I think, that worries me. Um, the electric cars themselves are fairly silent. Um, it's a low whine. The trouble is, of course, if they get slightly damaged, then the whine rises. But it's the associated spectator noise and the possibility of a uh, commentator. By far the largest noise on the YouTube one was the commentator doing a running commentator over the tannoy. Now, that, that seems to me um, a possible one which we need to watch. Again, uh, at the last point I'm going to ask a question about is we have a limited number of car parking spaces here, um, but we know that at other events, competitors' cars and then spectators' cars um, build up to something of the order of 80 cars, which is going to be quite difficult to accommodate on the recreation ground. Can I, can I have some answers to, have we thought about these things? Well, I mean, I think we're looking at something here which is a use which is not... Um, it's, it's not an intensive use, firstly. Let's look at the what it's limited to. Um, and I think, secondly, um, in terms of tannoy, things like that, so there is potential there for a limiting condition there um, in terms of not having any amplified um, loudspeakers or amplified music, that kind of thing. Um, I'd also say look at, up on the, the, the aerial there and how far away it is from residences. It is a long way from residences. Can you, can, can you tell me what the length of the lease is? Miles, on this? I don't know. Not unless I'm not a parks officer. Mm. So, um, I mean, I would say that, you know, it's something which we'd have to consider the reasonableness of such a condition. Likewise, the time limited, you must consider the reasonableness of it. I mean, a lot of what I'm hearing is that this could grow and become more problematic. But the, what it's limited to is fairly limited. And if it does grow, then it is enforceable because it will breach those conditions. I think, I think the concern is, the, uh, as we, we all know, the issues with the time taken on enforcement. We don't really, if, if permission was given, I don't think well, the committee wants to be in a position matter. to... to, that's, to, to yeah, that's not a planning matter. Yeah. The very fact is it's enforceable. Um, let's progress. Uh, Councillor Hammer, I th think, was first. Yes. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, to echo a couple of points, um, one of them, Councillor Barnes, Mary Barnes, um, who referred to the, the bikes that came in a few years ago, uh, the pit bikes on Cunnyborough Lane. Um, here's the challenge. You don't want to spoil anyone's fun. Um, but people have a right to have peace and quiet in their garden. Uh, my concern is that this came into planning about the pit bikes, and what was very important is that if they wanted to have a bigger bike, there was an enforcement or a condition in place, so that wasn't to happen. Um, so I would be very strongly recommending that we are sure that we can enforce and monitor this to make sure that does not happen. Another thing to consider, believe it or not, yeah, you look on the field and you can see where the, uh, where the cars are in situ to the car park and the residents. Um, on our patch, if it's a westerly wind, it's a different case altogether because the pit bike places in Cunnerborough and the people and residents on Calgary Park Road and in Little Common in a greenhouse can hear the bikes. Um, so the wind factor, I know it's not a, a policy or a planning thing and it's not something we can consider, but I would like to be reassured that um, it, this is monitored and enforced if anything bigger is attempted to be put on this site. At the same time, understandable, it's a recreational area. People have got to have some fun and meet up, and it's good to be outdoors and get the kids doing something. Um, I did have another point. Bear with me, sorry. Uh, the Sunday morning thing is a bit of a worry for me as well because I've heard the pit bikes on my patch on a Sunday morning. 
And um, is the, I, I'm sorry, Miles, I, I couldn't quite hear what, what your reply was earlier, as in, could that be changed? Is there a condition that's been put in there to at least make it later in the day? Thank you. Well, well on that point, I did say that you, there's potential to modify that, but um, if you put it later in the day, you're likely to impact on any potential recreation use on that Sunday afternoon. And there's talk about cricket coming back, wasn't there? If there's a cricket club playing there, they're not going to play in the morning. They're going to play at 2 o'clock, 2.30 in the afternoon. With respect, though, they're not going to play cricket on the, the car track, are they? Is there another section of the field where they play their cricket? Well, no, but it's still going to be part of it, isn't it? It's still going to be part of the, of the ground. I mean, that's it there. So that needs to be collected and cleared up. Yeah. So there's that. And the other side is with the... Yes, it's not a planning matter, but... For it to impact more on residents, it has to be a north or northeast <coughs> wind, which it doesn't blow from that quarter very often. And there's a mild wind. Uh, uh, yeah. Councillor Errington. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, just a few points. Paragraph <coughs> 7.1.7 on the, the fence. Can, can I get some clarity on whether that's going to be a lockable fence and therefore it's only going to be this particular 1066 group that are going to have access to it? Or is it going to be, you know, and are they going to police that to ensure, are we sure it's not going to be used by other users <coughs> in a week? It's the conditions for this group, but I can see if, if there's that facility up there, what's stopping somebody else going up on another night and using it? That's my first point. And the second point is AstroTurf was mentioned, but it does say that it is grass for now, and presumably they'd have to come back to us if they wanted to change the surface um, of the track. Um, <coughs> my, my final point is on um, sorry, content is, um, condition three. We say one e weekday evening per week, and, and she'll cease before sundown. We don't actually put a start time on that, and I was wondering if that would help the residents, because... There's nothing, for example, to stop people coming along on a sunny bank holiday Monday at two or three o'clock. Um, likewise, if people are working from home, you know, I think five o'clock is reasonable. I really agree with um, what Councillor Barnes has said about limiting this to two years. Um, otherwise, I might consider a condition that we perhaps exclude bank holidays, bearing in mind it's going to be on a Sunday and then you have two days running of what residents consider to be noise. But I, I'd much rather go with um, Councillor Barnes' trial of two years. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, yeah, there's the temporary permission can be considered. We can also look at just making a minor amendment to Condition 3 to say 5pm. I think it was 5pm that was stated in the, in the literature. Um, and I think in terms of the, the security of the site, that is something which um, I'm, I have to say I'm, I'm not sure about, but it's a matter for them, not for us. Uh, Councillor Gray. Oh, thank you, Chair, and thank you for your presentations. Um, Councillor Owington has just mentioned my concern, which is the... Sorry, is my microphone not working? <laughs> You've just um, quietly spoken. Yeah. Um, I'm very concerned about the use of AstroTurf as already mentioned by Councillor Errington. Um, there's no mention of that in the papers, and I think we all know that AstroTurf is environmentally disastrous. It's made of plastic, it disintegrates, and it's just a disaster. I, I don't think there's any... They would have to come back for permission to change that, so that point is made. Uh, Councillor Curtis. Thank you, Chair. I'm a bit, I'm a bit lost. We're listening to an application um, of trying to make a, a square peg fit a round hole. Um, I can speak with some gravity on this as a local councillor. I know the area. I know the roads. We're just listening to the nonsense, is what I can hear. Um, the track, the St Mary's Lane, if anyone has ever tried to traverse there during a normal day or evening, it's a nightmare. To be able to even consider 
that there's going to be 10, 15, 20 other vehicles in that area is ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. Yeah. Let, me, let me finish, please. Um, I've listened to, hopefully we'll come to, because um, this is important to have a, um, to deal with the subjects. We're currently dealing with exclusions and, and conditions, etc., etc., which would be of no use to the applicant. What use would it be if we said we're going to do this, we're going to do that? The simple fact remains is we have a field in Bexhill, rural Bexhill. We have residents and who enjoy the, the location as such. And somebody wants to put a racetrack in there on a, a, okay, it's a cricket field, it's a football field. It's not a racetrack. Um, my colleagues talk about Bexhill being the birthplace of motor race, and it certainly was, but I don't think it was in St Mary's Lane. Um, there is a track in, um, that I am fully aware of in Lower Dicker, which I think is the Eastbourne or Hailsham Club, which is based on a main road, doesn't interfere with um, anybody else, and as far as I'm aware, it's suitable. I would suggest that this is more suitable for a commercial area somewhere, because there will be a lot of people. Regardless of what um, we're being told, you know, oh, it's only going to be a few. We're gonna... It won't. And I've... these poor people um, are having to um, um, be told something which is contrary to common sense. Um, I'm just a bit intrigued that our own Bexhill um, Town Council, our newly formed Bexhill Town Council, has objected on this. Um, for the reasons stated in 6.3.1. 6 Surely that should count for something. This is a newly created Bexhill Council, which is um, supposedly for the interests of the residents of Rother. They have to be listened to, whichever way you go about it. I'm in, also intrigued that we had another application in that very same area, totally separate, totally different, a uh, different applicant, um, for an agricultural um, application, which was refused because they wanted to put a, to do with agriculture, and we refused it. And here we are considering, we want to put a racetrack on St Mary's, it's, I, sorry, I just, I can't get my head around it at the moment. Um, any local resident will identify the hazards of the road. It's, it's terrible, Chairman. It's not just, this is not um, being contrary to, um, it is terrible. And it always has been. It's, the application is clearly not compatible with the area. Other sites surely must be available. Um, we spoke about the traffic. The other thing, um, I've, I heard a comment earlier on, but again, I would um, differ. Uh, wildlife and traffic of any sort do not, are not compatible. It's, whichever way you look at it, whether it's, and this is, look at the, look at the area, the, there's, Badgers, foxes, wildlife, birds, etc., etc. It's not conclusive with a model racetrack. Um, I could probably go on about it all day, but I'm sure you'd rather I didn't. Um, but I think um, just a question um, on uh, 6.1.1, where it says about based on the information. Um, uh, the proposed use would be limited to blah, 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 blah. Well, what if it was more? It's all very well we sit and say, oh, yeah, well, we, you know, enforcement will sort it out. Well, it, what, in six months, a year, whatever? And in between times, people have got to uh, be subject to this. And um, unfortunately, I could not support the application. Thank you for your time. Chairman of the Council, Brian Tracy. Thank you, Chair. Um, Echoing a lot of what Councillor Curtis just said, but particularly on enforcement and touching, sorry, and touching on what Councillor Errington had said, on the basis that prevention is better than enforcement, I have a real problem with the noise. And paragraph 3-4 says, the track would remain open at other times for local use, brackets electric only. Not sure how you enforce other people who aren't in the 1066 group 
using electric cars only. Uh, and this would be, the use would be anticipated to be very minimal. I don't see how you can possibly say that because you have no idea what local use is going to be made of it. So I would suggest, and I didn't quite understand Mr Joyce's reply, why can we not have a, a condition to put noise baffling fences or pitches, um, raise or anything, I'm not a noise expert, but it's too late, two years down the line, to go, oh, we've made a mistake. Because enforcement is not the answer. Prevention is better. Thank you, Chair. Did you want, did you want to ask Miles? Yes, can you just clarify question? about the condition of putting noise um, reducing fencing? Fencing. Thank you. Well, on, on that point, um, the noise reducing fencing itself would be an operational development. Um, you're talking about use of, of, of light use. We're talking about no objections from our own environmental health officers. Um, they do not see a problem with noise. Um, they do not suggest such a condition, which they would do if they felt there was an issue. Um, and there would be you know, this talk about traffic and about parking. Well, if there are going to be other uses, and there were other uses, presumably there are always people going there, driving to the recreational ground. You know, so um, I don't think we can support a condition on that because our own environmental health officers are saying that they have no objection and they do not recommend any conditions either. We have limiting conditions in place. We can look at modifying them. Um, and I would just say that, of course, all, um, all consultation responses have been taken into account from residents and from the town council, I'll just be very clear on that point as well. Thank you. Councillor Barnes, did you want to say another word? I think you yeah. I think I would now like to make some comments. Um, I've got a lot of sympathy with both sides, to be honest. Uh, I really don't, I don't take the point about environmental health officers unless they have attended one of these events and uh, have some experience of them. Um, they are potentially quite large-scale. Um, what we don't know is whether this one will be large-scale. Um, we have a particular user. It's a club use. Um, I think it's a bit worrying to then talk about local use, um, unless that too is limited in time. Um, but... All of I'm hearing around the room suggests that if we are going to give this, we should give it for an experimental period uh, rather than a permanent period uh, because this is not a usual use for recreation ground. So we've no experience really of the kind of noise it will generate, the kind of impact it will generate. And we need to learn. So I frankly would compromise and I would compromise between the residents who have strenuous objections and the applicant who is offering to make use of ground which is underused at the moment, which might trigger bringing that ground back into wider use, provide the toilets because they are there probably in the building, uh, but not open at the moment. So there are benefits to actually bringing the ground into use for something and this might turn out actually to be, as the developer says, a reasonably quiet use which will benefit us. But we don't know. And that's why I would personally limit it to a period of time. And I'm quite prepared to test opinion on that because I fancy there's quite a lot of hostility. And if we are going to try it, I don't think it should be on a permanent basis where we presume on knowledge we haven't got. Thank you, Chair. Um, I really, really do understand and appreciate the concerns of the residents. They have had the benefit, and they will continue to have the benefit of this lovely open space there for them. Um, and we on this council have had lots of experience in uh, the Mooga at Ticehurst. I don't know if you've got memories of that. Um, the, um, and we've had the skateboard and the BMX track. And both those activities were far, far different from the one proposed here. 
far different. I, I think noise is one of the worst pollutants you can have and debilitating in, in a huge way. And I trust our environmental health officers that they know what they're talking about because certainly when I've had noise problems in my patch, they have reacted very strongly and helped out with these situations. And if, if residents know when it's going to be noisy, I think that's one of the problems with noise. They know when it's going to be noisy, but the extent of the noise. And our environmental health officers are saying, it's acceptable, the levels. Um, initially, when I looked at this, I just thought I'd go, I was going to propose um, a trial period of two, two years. Would two years be sufficient to get it established? I don't know. And the other thing that I do know about applications like this, which raise a lot of public concern, is the public are the best monitors of what's going on in places like that. And certainly they would be the first onto the environmental health officers to actually say, look, this is not acceptable. Please measure it. Hi, Mr. Chair. I hate to disagree with Councillor Barnes, but I can't agree with him when he says that because we have an open space, we have to create some organised activity to fill it. I think open spaces are very precious amenities and have a right to survive in their own right. The issue, the issue for me here, the main issue, is the disturbance or non-disturbance to residents. And I have a slight conflict here because Miles said um, quite categorically that the houses were some distance away and implied that they wouldn't be disturbed. That obviously was not the impression we got from the residents. Uh, I think they have convinced me by their reactions that they do feel there is a, a real threat of disturbance. And I'd also support the argument about Sunday morning. Um, whether you're a churchgoer or not, and I obviously am as a clergyman, it, it is a precious time, Sunday morning. It's a time for relaxation. It's a time for people to enjoy their gardens, their homes, their hobbies. And I think that we should find some other time for it if we give permission. Thank you. Councillor Langton, Councillor Langton, yeah. Thank you, Chair. I think I would wholeheartedly support Councillor Barnes with his limit to the Planning Commission because I think that also covers off the issue of later on putting down AstroTurf because that can then become something that can be carefully looked at because you've given limited planning permission. Um, I have an issue with... Sunday morning, because if somebody started playing football up there and you have no measure of the number of spectators that are going to arrive, the noise could be quite considerable. Yeah. The traffic could be quite considerable, yeah. yet it is a space that lends itself to that sort of activity. So I'm a little bit, I'm struggling just a little bit with that limit on Sunday morning because it is the time that most clubs play the sport that they play. So I have a problem with that. Um, in the YouTube video, I did see um, generators and it would concern me. Now, having had years of experience on a boat, on a narrow boat, I can honestly say that a petrol generator is the noisiest thing going. Um, a gas one is really, really quiet. So having put it on the bank of various places when we've stopped on our boat. So I would be very concerned about the generator issue, and I do think that's something that needs looking at, because if it backs up the electric cars, it could be quite noisy. Um, I, as I say, I will go back to saying that I would support a limited time on this. We need to move into the 21st century. We need to look at activities that will cover off a range of age groups and be beneficial to the community who have suffered considerably from COVID and being stuck at home. They need to be out. It's out in the fresh air. It's something that is very modern and 
Uh, it's got a, a really futuristic view about it. It, it. Hopefully, it needs to stay. Well, it definitely needs to stay electric. That's for sure. Um, but I wouldn't. I would agree with giving it a go. I think and just seeing how it goes, and then let our public feed back to us on how it's affecting them, so that in the two years we can then turn around and say, well, this actually doesn't work. Thank you, Chair. A um, couple of points. First one will be to um, Miles on, on the definition. We've now called this piece of grass three different things this morning. We've called it an open space, a recreation ground, and a greenfield site. If it's a recreation ground, can we continue to use that word so that we are thinking about recreation, not greenfield site, because that leads me to think about planning, etc., etc. open space, very quiet. So that, that's one point I need to make sure we've all got our heads. This is a recreation ground and what that actually means, as I think Councillor Langman has said, what it meant 20 years ago is not necessarily what it meant today. Um, I've got a question perhaps to Councillors Coleman and Carroll. How long is it since football has been played or rugby or cricket on that field? Because um, the yet residents are concerned about the noise, but I fear they, if it's been several years, then they've got used to that quiet. And as Councillor Langman says, if we get football back up there again, or if we get cricket, football in particular, if we have a day's worth of a tournament, if we have junior teams, it's going to be from early in the morning until late in the day, and the noise will be not just the noise of chatter, but the shouting and the swearing, etc., etc. So I just want to get a hang handle of, of what that's been used for at the moment and whether it's been sort of fallow. Thank you. One of you want to answer that question? Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, with the, um, the rugby, they went to uh, Hastings, so we had the pole grove and we had St Mary's. Uh, that's one of them. The cricket has been played by uh, Sidley, and then Bex Hill took it over, and now we're looking at Sidley to take it over again because they lost their ground. And now, if we can open the ground up they had before, they wouldn't be allowed to because it hasn't got enough space. But there's people working hard at the moment trying to get things sorted out, and it would be a good thing for that. And we, we, we also had the football up there, but the Sunday football is not any longer. And we're, we're trying to... Uh, keep sports in the area because um, we've noticed with um, the way it was in the 70s and the 80s we had a lot of night crime and if we have these sports for youngsters and that, they go home and go to bed instead of walking around the streets and causing mayhem and I think it's been a good thing and we've worked hard on it we've worked hard on Sidley but it's all bits that fit the puzzle <coughs> and this is part of the puzzle we've got to get it together and get the people out there and using these things, and it's for the benefit of the neighbours and everyone. Is there anything else? Sorry, so is, sorry, is it, is it a couple of years, perhaps, Councillor Carroll, that it's, it's not been used for a couple of years, maybe, that site? Um, I, I think the last person to play out there was the, um, uh, the uh, Bexhill Town uh, Cricket. Uh, but there's been no football. As I said, there's no Sunday football anymore. For how long? But there is teams that still, still, still need to play. How long ago was it? I'd say two, three years ago. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, no, no. Uh, look, how many times do you need to be warned? I, I promise you I will clear the public gallery next time there's an outburst or there's pointing or interjection. I don't want to do it. I've never done it before, but it is really irritating. Well, you do allow noise. You, sir, if you would now like to... allow noise in this place. No, would you like to leave the room now? Excuse me, sir. Unless you lie. leave, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. And you have not considered children. I want to... Excuse me, sir. Please leave the room. Would you please leave the room? Okay, I'm adjourning the meeting. Uh, we're having a 10 minute break. Thank you. The uh, Planning Committee meeting of Thursday, the uh, 10th of March. So thank you very much. And uh, I think we're just at the point where.
Council, well, I'm just going to have one more speaker. Uh, and there was one person who wanted to speak, and I think Councillor John Barnes wanted to, to speak. So, Councillor Mary Barnes, did you want to speak again? Or you did indicate that. All I just wanted to be sure is that if we do go along the routes that I think my husband is suggesting, that we get the conditions absolutely, absolutely clearly understood. Um, the, uh, um, and I'm sure between us we'll, we, we can say what those conditions are, but I think it needs to be clearly understood that those conditions are in place. Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Barnes. Um, Councillor John Barnes. Chairman, I, th I think it's time to test opinion. Good. And I think what I would like to propose, and I hope to find a seconder, is that we have a trial period of two years, in other words, planning permission, which will have to be renewed at the end of two years, and we ask the officers to explore the appropriate conditions governing noise, um, uh, they will need to take advice, obviously, for environmental health. But it should be possible to set a limit which should not be uh, exceeded uh, for a period of uh, more than a minute. Um, you've got to allow for the odd burst of applause. <coughs> but uh, I simply think we don't know enough uh, to give a permanent permission at the moment. So I so move. Okay, so um, Councillor John Barnes is proposing uh, approval, a temporary approval for two years and with uh, additional conditions to be delegated down and those conditions would be um, discussed also between the proposer, development manager and myself and would deal with issues of environmental health generated tannoy um, in a time if necessary. It's getting potential noise things yeah. under control. Okay. I've got two people. Are you seconding? Is that right? Are you... Yes, please. May I you... second? You may second. You. Did you? Okay, that's been seconded. Uh, Councillor Langs, you were third, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to point out a quick point because it was asked earlier. On their um, parking vehicle access and movement plan, which is, which is in the documentation, um, it says there will be a nominated key holder. We were talking about security. There will be a nominated key holder within the club who will be responsible for locking and opening, and the number of vehicles permitted entry will not exceed the number of allocated parking spaces. It was just a, a point of reference to reassure the security Thank part. Thank you for the clarity on that. And, and I did also just want, before we take a vote on that, uh, I think Councillor Carroll just wanted to sort of clarify something he said earlier, just for the record, if you like. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The... Um Young wrong, uh, I, I, I gave him a figure that was wrong and I've apologised to him and he's apologised to me for calling me a liar but I didn't have the facts in front of me and it was guesswork. But uh, we're, we're all right at the moment. Thank uh, you very thank much. You very much. Uh, and he's... Oh. Yes, um, I sort of do want to take a vote. Is it really... Oh, very quickly and I think... Councilman. Just very quickly going back to the conditions again. Please, please, no high-powered um, electric... Cars. That was referred to by one of the speakers. Um, just keep the noise right down. Okay, uh, Councillor Mir, very quickly, and then we are taking a vote. I, I, I would be much happier with the conditions, taking up Councillor Mary Barnes's point. I would be much happier if we said here and now that there should be no tannoys, no amplified music, and no generators. Yeah, I, I think, I, I think right. that must be quite clear. Uh, the, the other point about monitoring of noise from the engines and so on, I think is a rather different thing, and that, that is one on which officers do need to take expert advice. Okay, so I think, we, I think those points will be noted for the officers to deal with under that delegation, yeah? And, 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 uh, and that will involve environmental health. But as I said, that will be seen by the proposer and myself. You want to have a look at it too, you can, you know, so before, I, I, yes. to make sure those conditions I, 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 are... I hope the, view, the views of the, of the meeting on, on, on those matters of noise and amplification and so on are noted in the minutes. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I, I would agree that there should not be a generator or tannoy. Uh, on the site because they, they are the things that can really generate a lot of noise. And we have to 
I'm, oh, just, just, I'm cautious about kind of Sorry, rather than say no generators, I would rather legislate to control noise because it's not the fact a generator is on site, it's if it makes unacceptable. Okay, noise. let's let's it's take the let, let's take those points as noted for the officers to consider in their delegated um, uh, conditions as you suggested. And you will see those so you know before they before they go out for any form of approval, just as a, as a double check, Councillor Mayor. And, and to be absolutely clear, and I'm sure it's in, in the papers somewhere, absolutely clear, we're, we're voting for a grass surface and nothing else. It is, that is correct. Okay, there is no other condition. So you have the proposal in front of you, and that is for approved with, uh, with conditions all related to the, the points that have been made in terms of tannoy generator noise uh, and times to be delegated, and they will be... Uh, circulated for the proposer to, to see and to cross-check, um, and that is the proposal for a two-year temporary approval. Um, those in favour of that, please show their hands. Okay. Those against? It's two. And do we have any abstaining? standing. So that, uh, that motion is passed as said. Thank you very much and thank you for the public who have attended. I appreciate it. this has been a rather emotive discussion and I certainly apologise for having to adjourn it but sometimes that is the only way. Uh, and on that basis we're going to move to the next item on the agenda uh, which is uh, appeals. You can have a look at the list of appeals and uh, ask any question that you might like to ask. Are there, are there any questions on the appeals? Any questions on the appeals? We're on appeals. Yeah, item, item 8 has been deferred, as I mentioned before. So we're on item 9, which is appeals. Any questions on the appeals that are coming forward? Yes, Councillor Muir. Um, yes, um, the Wakeham's farm at Fairlight, the land south of uh, Pet Level Road, uh, as far as I can see, the inspector seems to want to proceed by means of written representations only. Um, and I think Cabinet had hoped that it would be by uh, a mixed procedure. And I don't know if officers have anything to say about that, the present state of that. Well, at the moment, um, it's been chosen by the inspectorate to go under written reps. They can change that. Um, it depends on the situation. Normally, it's fairly exceptional for inquiries or even hearings, and they prefer to do it under the written reps procedure. So at the moment, it is written reps, but that may change um, if they consider it more appropriate to be under a different um, a different method of determination. Can we ask for it to be, I, mean, we, I think the Cabinet did ask for it to be under a hearing because it is a slightly more complicated in that it was an allocated site and therefore it's, it's a bit more controversial than it was, it was uh, refused because of the, uh, the access to the, the, or the lack of access to the village. Is that something that we can go back to them on? We can, we can go back to them on that. In the end it will be their decision yeah. on this and, right. and, and why. Because a hearing that essentially is about does it take in significant local interest? Mm. Well, it certainly has had enormous local interest, mm. Mm. and it's a, it's a fairly large site. There, Councillor Barnes, for you. Chairman, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the officers on winning the judicial review over the neighbourhood plan. Um, this seems to be about the only moment at which one can register that at this committee. Um, on Bowash, there is an outstanding appeal on uh, the land off Stram Meadow. I couldn't find it anywhere in the list, so I wonder what progress has actually uh, been made on that appeal. Um, 
it was presumably suspended while we, the applicant and ourselves, were waiting the outcome of judicial review. Although technically the judicial review is not necessarily pertinent to that appeal. Um, so uh, it seems to be sitting in limbo somewhere and isn't, I couldn't see it. I, can, I can look into that. Um, one thing we could, we could do, um, perhaps, is before a, a committee meeting to ask a question. And, I, um, and hopefully, I'd hope, I'll be able to give you an update at committee. But I can come back to you on that, Councillor Bucks. And, uh, and I should reflect the, uh, um, the success of the Burwash um, Judicial Review, which uh, has been very time-consuming. And for anyone who watched it, it was quite hard work, really. But um, we do have to be a little careful because they're, they're the, 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 um, um, uh, the person, the, the company that was applying for the review does still have avenues for appeal, so we have to wait we can't. Um, you know, I think the recommendation at the moment is that we cannot move forward to recommend to referendum until that appeal period is uh, passed. So I think that needs to be discussed um, you know, with the officers. And I will be very happy just to ha have a word with you afterwards about that. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Gann. Oh, sorry, Councillor Project was before you. My apologies. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Barnes beat me to it, and to congratulate officers, and would you please pass on to the team, yes. because there's a lot of work around that decision, and I did watch some of it, and it was quite hard working watching it. Um, so congratulations to, to our, our team and of our officers. I just wanted to make another comment, is that in this list on appeals, whether it's they're allowed or started, whatever, there's one appeal dismissed, which is our one committee decision, and the inspector upheld the committee's view. Oh, that was, yeah. Yeah. I, th I, think, I think I have to be clear. It was both an officer's recommendation and a committee decision. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Ganley. Under uh, appeals allowed, there is, on page 21, there is a um, phone bank in Northam. I wonder whether that was that came before the committee. I can't remember whether it came before committee. It did not. So it was an officer's decision that's correct, yeah. Been overturned. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think I think the, the, the officers have a pretty good record. I think at the last um, committee it's something like a seventy five percent success rate at, at appeal, which is pretty good really. Pretty good. That you know. Yes, Councillor Harmer. Um, just a quick question, page 21, forthcoming hearings, inquiries, we've got um, the Clues Caravan site, and I know that um, this is an inquiry, but the initial one did take an awful long time. How long do these hearings, inquiries take, please? Normally, in the life of appeal, there will be um, the statements and there'll be final comments, an inspector's site visit and a decision. Um, with a hearing, there'll be a date for the hearing. Um, with an inquiry, you'd have to also submit a proof of evidence four weeks before an inquiry. So um, that can significantly lengthen the time before you get to inquiry. It's also having the right kind of inspector available. So it can significantly lengthen the appeal process. How long a hearing? Um, hearings are normally a day, half day or a day. Um, inquiries can be. Um, anything from a, a day to two weeks, depending on the nature of the planning application. Now, if you wanted a hearing, that would be a one day. It would be one day, I would have thought, almost certainly not more than a day set aside for that. Thank you. Any other questions on appeals? Any other thoughts? Good, good. So that takes us to the um, last item, which is item 10, just to note the time and day for the future site visits, which is the 12th of April, 12th, Tuesday the 12th of April. More detail on that closer to the date. And on that basis, I'm going to close the meeting. Sorry, did you? I thought I did. I'm going to close the meeting. So thank you very much. <coughs>